Hello everyone. Today we will address some important questions regarding constraint layout. The first question is how to centralize a view in constraint layout. So create a project in Android Studio and go to the XML file of main activity. The beautiful thing of constraint layout is that all power is directly available from the layout edited visual tools. So going to design view and adding a button. Now we want to centralize this button in the constraint layout. For that we will have to add some constraints. From here drag this circular handle to the top of the parent. This will add a top constraint and then drag this handle to the bottom of the parent. So we have added two constraints top and bottom and now this button is vertically centralized. If you also want to centralize it horizontally then add two more constraints left and right. Drag this handle to the left and drag this handle to the right. So now this button is centralized in both direction horizontally as well as vertically. If you don't want a view exactly in the center of constraint layout you can change its position from these two by sliders. From here you can change its position in vertical direction and from this by slider you can change its position in horizontal direction. So this is how we can centralize a view in constraint layout. In the code, you can see that we have added four constraints, top, bottom and left, right. And also we have changed horizontal bias and vertical bias values. Now coming towards the second question, how we can set width and height of a view in a ratio with respect to each other. For example, if you want to set height of this button which is quarter of its width for that we use layout constraint dimension ratio attribute. This attribute this attribute takes two values. The first one is for the width and the second one is for the height of the view. Now let's see how this attribute behaves differently in different scenarios. The first scenario is if both layout width and layout height values are 0 dp. In this case attribute having higher value will be taken as a base or a reference value. So layout underscore width will be taken as a base because its value which is 4 is greater than 1. Now this 4 means that width of this view which is equal to its parent will be divided in 4 equal units. And this one means that height of the button will be set to one unit. If we change these values for example to 5 colon 2 then this means that width of the button is divided in 5 equal units and height and its height is set to 2 units. If we swap these values 2 colon 5. Now in this case 5 which is for layout height is greater than 2. So now height will be taken as a base or a reference value. 
now this 5 means that height of the button will be divided in 5 equal units and its width will be set to 2 units. You can try different values. For example, if I change this value to 10, then this means that height of the button is divided in 10 equal units and its width is set to 2 units. If you set this value to 5, then this means that width of the button will be half of its width. So this is the first scenario. Second scenario is to set one attribute to wrap content and other to zero dp. So here I am setting layout width value to wrap content and height to zero dp. Now width will be taken as a base or reference value. So if I put value 2 colon 1, this will mean that button width will be divided in 2 equal units while its height will be set to 1 unit. If I change this value to 4, now height of the button will be double as compared to its width. If I swap these values, changing layout height to wrap content and width to 0 dp. Now, this value will be taken as a base or reference value. So, if I change this, this value to 2 colon 1, this will mean that height of the button which is equal to wrap content will be considered as one unit and its width will be set to two units. If I change this value to four, then button width will be set to four units. In this case, one unit will be equal to the height of the button which is wrap content. Now if I change layout width to match parent and change height value to 0 dp. Now in this case width will be taken as a base or reference value. And here 4 means that width will be divided in 4 equal units. And in this case width of the button is equal to its parent width. And height will be set to 1 unit. Now coming towards the third scenario, if both attributes layout width and height are set to wrap content similarly setting layout height to wrap content. Now in this case this attribute will be ineffective. If we change these values it will not affect button width and height. Similarly if we set layout width to match parent and similarly set layout height to match parent then in this case this attribute will also be an effective. If we change these values it will not affect button width and height. So this is how this attribute behaves differently in different scenarios. Now coming towards the third question, how we can set a view width and height in percent with respect to its parent width and height. So we want to set width and height of this button to 50% of its parent width and height. For that I am using two attributes 
constraint width underscore percent and setting its value to 0.5 and and for height I am using constraint height underscore percent and also setting its value to 0.5 these two attributes will be effective if both layout width and layout height values are 0 dp so i am setting values of these two attributes to 0 dp so here you can see width and height of the button were set to 50 percent of its parent width and height if we change these values to wrap content or match parent then these attributes will be ineffective so here you can see that now this attribute is ineffective because we have used wrap content value for layout width attribute similarly if i change layout height value to match parent then this attribute will become ineffective so to honor these constraints with these values we will have to set two attributes to true the first one is constraint width equal to true and the second is constraint height equal to true so here you can see that again these attributes have become effective and width and height of the button were set to 50 percent of its parent width and height so this is how we can set width and height of a view in percentages with respect to its parent now coming towards the final question what are guidelines in constraint layout a guideline is used to constrain a view and it is invisible to the app user in this example there are four constraints for this button now i want to remove left and right constraint and instead add two vertical guidelines so in the design view click this cross icon this will remove left constraint and click this icon it will remove right constraint so now this button is having only two constraint top and bottom now from here this is the guideline icon click on it and click vertical guideline so here you can see a dotted vertical line again click on this icon and add another vertical guideline so in the code here you can see we have added two guidelines here i am changing this attribute to percent and setting its value to 0.5 this will give a margin of 10 percent to the left of this guideline and also changing this attribute to percent and changing its value to 0.9 so we have added these two guidelines in the design view click on this button and drag this circular handle to the left guideline and drag this circular handle to the right guideline so now this button is again having four constraints vertically it is constrained in the parent layout and horizontally it is constrained within these two vertical guidelines so this is how we can use guidelines to constrain a view
so that's it for this tutorial please subscribe to the channel thank you